Are you thinking of moving to Portugal in 2024, but unsure where the best region to live is, what visa to apply for, the taxes involved, the cost of living, and more? Then this video is for you. Hi guys, it's Russell from Portugal Buyers, where we help expats like you move and purchase property in Portugal. We have helped countless clients start their new lives in this beautiful country or purchase an excellent investment property. With years of experience, I know exactly how Portugal works when it comes to bureaucracy, administration, property and taxes. Here are all the important things you need to know about moving to Portugal in 2024. To start, you are gonna to need to get residency. So let's discuss the options available for that. If you're an EU citizen, it's fairly straightforward and you don't need a visa to move to Portugal. However, you must apply for a registration certificate to stay longer than three months in this country. The application for the certificate takes place at your local council and you must do it within the first 30 days of the three months here in Portugal. The registration certificate is valid for five years from the issuance date. But what if you come from the UK, US or anywhere else outside the EU? Basically, you will need to apply for and be approved for a residency permit. Portugal offers a number of residency visas and permits that allow students, entrepreneurs, retirees and digital nomads to move here. Many of these permits are considered extremely obtainable when compared to other EU countries, which is one of the reasons Portugal has become such a popular place to move to. And in most instances, if you live in Portugal for five years or more, you'll be eligible to apply for a Portuguese citizenship and obtain a Portuguese passport, which will give you freedom to move to any other EU country if you choose to do so. As mentioned, Portugal offers a number of different residency permits, the most popular being the D7 visa, which is aimed at those with passive income, such as a pension or social security. The D2, which is aimed at entrepreneurs, and the digital nomad visa, which is aimed at those with a salary or regular income coming from clients. There's also the golden visa, however, following an announcement in February 2023, it's expected that the Portuguese government will phase this out and is no longer possible with a property investment, unfortunately. Hey guys, please subscribe to the channel below so you can stay up to date with all the latest news and information about Portugal. Let's get back into it. After figuring out what residency option is best for you, it's time to find the best region and area to live in. Portugal has four main areas where expats end up living, which are Lisbon, the Algarve, the Silver Coast, and Porto. Each has its own pros and cons and suits different lifestyles more or less. The Algarve is known for its incredible year-round weather, stunning coastline, beautiful beaches, world-class golf, delicious food. But with this comes a lot of seasonal tourism and it gets incredibly busy during the summers and quiet during the rest of the year. The Algarve is ideal for, the, for retirees looking for the dream life, playing the best golf courses and eating at some of the best restaurants around the world. However, if you are looking for a more city atmosphere and life, then Lisbon might be your answer. Lisbon is the vibrant capital city of Portugal, located on the western coast in between Porto and the Algarve. It is known for its charming old neighborhoods, colorful architecture, old fashioned trams, delicious food and rich history. Unique and charming, Lisbon is the city that's easy to fall in love with. Lisbon is ideal for those looking for a lot going on all the time. It can get very busy and loud, so be prepared. If you're still working, Lisbon can potentially give you a great life balance with the activity of the city and the more laid back lifestyle Portugal is known for. Heading a little bit north of Lisbon along the shoreline is where we'll find the Silver Coast. The Silver Coast is ideal for those looking to live the retired lifestyle. People looking to move to the Silver Coast find Nazaré an ideal destination because of its natural beauty, quality of life, nearby urban centers, its famous beaches and the cost of living. The Silver Coast is generally considered to be cheaper than the Algarve. However, however, the weather is considerably colder and wetter during the winter, along with not having the same quality and infrastructure as the Algarve. Heading to the north, we find Portugal's second largest city, Porto. Porto is an incredibly beautiful city with lots of historical and cultural attractions. It has a growing expat scene, a great international airport and good public transport, both within the city and to nearby locations. Due to Porto being the most northerly, it has the worst year-round weather, with colder and wetter seasons. Just about an hour drive outside of Porto, you can find the incredible Dordo Valley, which is famous for its beautiful vineyards, outstanding wine, and it is definitely worth a visit. 
Now, once you have found your ideal location, it's important to consider the tax implications when moving to Portugal. We're gonna cover the income tax that you're gonna experience in Portugal and also the property taxes here. Firstly, the income tax works on a progressive basis, ranging from 13.25% to 48%, with deductibles as of 2024. You can see the brackets on the screen here right now. So if you make 50,000 euros per year, your net income after taxes will be around 30,449 euros. You will also become a tax resident in Portugal if you spend more than 183 days here per year. We have helped a lot of our clients save a ton of money by setting them up correctly. So definitely reach out to a financial advisor so you're fully prepared. VAT value added tax is at 23% on almost all goods and services. However, it is already included in the price. So what you see on the price tag is what you are paying. There are two types of annual property taxes in Portugal, which are the IMI and the AIMI. The Imposto Municipal Sobre Imóveis tax, IMI, is a municipal tax paid by anyone who owns a property in Portugal on the 31st of December of any year. And that tax ranges from 0.3 to 0.45% for urban properties and 0.8% for rural properties. The next tax is the AIMI tax, and this is a wealth tax on property in Portugal and it starts from 0.7% for properties over 600,000 euros in value if it's owned by an individual owner. If it's owned by a couple, then it starts at 1.2 million euros. And this is an important factor to consider because you can save a lot of money on property taxes by setting the house up owned by a couple if you do have a spouse. So that's an important thing to consider because you can save a lot of money on the wealth taxes in Portugal. When purchasing a property in Portugal, you will have to pay an initial transfer tax called IMT, which is on a progressive basis up to 8% of the property purchase price. Along with the IMT tax, you will also have to pay stamp duty, with it, which is at a fixed rate of 0.8%. You can find calculators to all of these taxes on our website, linked in the description below, portugalbuyers.com. Now, how much does it cost to live in Portugal? Compared to many other countries in Europe, Portugal is a very affordable country to live in. Most things from securing an apartment to eating in your local restaurants are significantly cheaper when compared to other Western countries. However, factor this against the salaries and minimum wage here, which is also considerably lower than many other countries as well. The cost of living, as in any country, is completely dependent on your income, financial situation, and spending habits. Do you want that luxurious rooftop with your favorite cocktail? Are you happy to eat at home most nights? Or do you want to enjoy the culinary delights of this wonderful country? These are all things that you should consider when looking at the cost of living in Portugal. It is important to note that the cost of living in Lisbon and parts of the Algarve from property to restaurants are more expensive than in other areas of the country, especially in the interior and more rural areas. Particularly in the parts of the country that do not have high numbers of expats, prices can be very cheap indeed. Even Porto, the second largest city in the country, is noticeably more affordable than its southern counterparts. Now let's get into the actual numbers. The biggest expense you'll likely incur is rent. The average rent for a one bedroom apartment in Lisbon is 1,400 euros per month. In Porto, the average is 1,048 euros per month, and in the Algarve is 959 euros per month. For basic bills, electricity, heating, cooling, and water, for a 85 square meter apartment will cost you on average 110 euros per month. The internet will cost you on average 35 euros per month, and international private schooling for your children will cost an average of 9,300 annually. Don't miss out on the latest news and opportunities and join our free WhatsApp group, which will be linked in the description below. We promise there will be no spam as only admins can post on there. And do not forget to click the bell icon in the top right so you turn on those notifications in the WhatsApp group. Eating out of restaurants is also very affordable in Portugal, running you 10 euro per person at a local Portuguese restaurant and 20 euro per person at a mid-range restaurant on average. Almost all restaurants and bars sell house wine, which usually tastes excellent and is very affordable, running you less than 10 euros per bottle at a Portuguese restaurant. If you are in more touristic areas, then prices can go up quite considerably, although this does not mean better food by any means.
If you are looking to move or purchase a property in Portugal, then we've got your back. We're Portugal Buyers, an exclusive buyers agency that handles everything from A to Z, so you can relocate or invest in Portugal completely stress and hassle-free. We have helped our clients save millions by having access to the whole property market, drawing the negotiation process, and much more. You can book a free call with us using the first link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.